This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1874. Seven Savvy Tips to Keep Your Piggy Bank Happy by Hannah with makingsenseofsense.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. We're gonna get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Seven Savvy Tips to Keep Your Piggy Bank Happy by Hannah with makingsenseofsense.com. Do you suffer from what most Americans suffer from? Is it difficult for you to get ahead financially? Feeling overwhelmed by your constantly depleted piggy bank? My husband and I had the same conundrum. I have some tips that have helped out our wallet immensely. We decided to utilize these seven tips to help cut back on expenses so we wouldn't continue breaking the bank. Number one, get a budget and stick to it. My husband was never a hard copy budget kind of guy. However, I am that kind of girl. I need to see tangibly where the money is going and what our goals are. I feel like many people need to see that or else it doesn't hit home. You can constantly swipe, swipe, swipe and never feel the impact of those purchases. So what was our compromise? We found a website called mint.com and it has totally changed the way we look at budgeting. Plus, it has an app so we can access it while we're out. I always open it to double check in case I have to put something back while shopping. It'll keep you accountable, not only to yourself, but to one another. Number two, Gas Buddy. This is a great website to check out. And ta-da, it also comes in a handy dandy app because I always check my gas level when I'm out and about. And lo and behold, I will have no idea where the cheapest gas is. This little gem helps me to locate the best gas in my area. Go ahead, install it, use it, and you'll thank me. You may not think those few cents add up, but think again. Number three, drink coffee at home. This is hard for me to stick to. I love getting coffee or tea out. It is my happy. However, if you love to pop over to Starbucks once in a while, make a budget and stick to it. And don't forget to make your own at home. Get a reusable glass and make your own iced coffee, lattes, or tea at your house and bring it with you. You'll have a happy in your hand when you go out and you won't have to bust that piggy bank wide open for a $4 drink. Number four, shop sales and used. My husband and I rarely ever buy retail. I would rather have three to four items than one overpriced item. Wouldn't you agree? We always look on Amazon before we go to Target and pick up what we want. Oh, and P.S., Target now price matches Amazon. So if you pull that phone out while shopping and show them the lower price, they'll match it. We also have no new vehicles. Why buy a new one when you can buy used? The car depreciates right when you leave the dealership. Thanks, but no thanks. When you can, buy used and look for sales. Number five, leave your card at home. If you're easily tempted, then avoid temptation altogether. Leave your cash or card at home or in your car. Window shopping can be just as fun, and if you really want something, you can think about it instead of impulsively buying. You can also mull over how it will affect your budget and your goals. When you get back into your car and back home, you'll be happy you didn't succumb to temptation. If you do need to go shopping but cannot control your credit card usage, stick to cash or checks. Number six, join Costco. For the longest time, my hubby thought that joining Costco would be a waste of money. He changed his tune. We have already saved hundreds by going to Costco. I love that they're getting more organic and gluten-free foods. With extra food, I can pre-portion it, the stuff that isn't pre-portioned already like salmon, and freeze it for future meals. If you have kiddos, then Costco is a must so you won't go into debt trying to feed your family quality food. And number seven, monitor utilities. Are you turning your lights off? How about your AC? Be sure that when you're leaving each room, you make it a rule to turn off any lights. Also on cooler days, try opening your windows and letting the breeze cool your house. In the winter, invest in heating blankets to keep the cost down. If you simply implement a few of these tips, you'll start seeing a decrease in expenditures and an increase in your piggy bank. As Benjamin Franklin said, quote, 
if you take care of your pennies, your dollars will take care of themselves, end quote. Believe it or not, the pennies do add up. So start keeping track and start saving. You just listened to the post titled Seven Savvy Tips to Keep Your Piggy Bank Happy by Hannah with makingsenseofsense.com. I'm not sure about you, but I've definitely noticed the rising prices lately, especially on gas and groceries. So I appreciated the great reminders in this article on ways to save. I just downloaded the Gas Buddy app and see that there are cheaper gas options than the station closest to my house. I figured they would all be about the same, but there's actually a 14 cent spread between the various options in my vicinity. The other thing I need to weigh this against are the rewards points I earned for gas while grocery shopping at Kroger. I can save up to a dollar a gallon through the rewards points. So when it's time to get gas, I now have a few options to compare. Now that I'm meal planning and shopping for a family versus just myself, I'm spending more time and energy trying to figure out how to cut costs. This past weekend, I checked out my local Aldi as I've heard it's the best place to find discounted groceries. I spent a lot of time comparing prices at Aldi to what I could see was available at Kroger via the app on my phone. There were some items that were cheaper at Aldi, but many items were cheaper at Kroger due to them being on sale that week or because additional savings could be claimed with digital coupons. Some things were significantly cheaper at Aldi, like cat food, for example. But I found that most of the items were pretty comparable and that Aldi didn't have a lot of the items that I needed. While I'm glad I made an attempt to save money on groceries, I must mention that I spent four hours grocery shopping this weekend due to all the price comparison and needing to go to two different stores. And while I don't have a specific dollar number on how much I saved, I'm not sure that it was enough to justify all the time it took me. I'm going to continue to refine my process here, but I'm leaning towards sticking with Kroger and doing a better job meal planning around the weekly deals and digital coupons. I also think I could do a better job buying non-perishables in bulk through Amazon and this will likely be a more efficient use of time when it comes to price comparisons. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Thursday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.